Hey there ladies and gents, welcome back to the vlog. My name is Drew and this is Tiger Balm. And if you guys have never used Tiger Balm, it's this magical elixir that you can put on your skin and it helps with aches and burns and stuff like that. I don't know why I have it on my desk, but I do. So today we're going to be talking about a mental health topic and as is the case with all mental health videos that I make, I always start off with something positive or something good that's going on in my life. Um, making these videos and I'm going to be editing them very soon and uploading them and hopefully they'll reach a wider audience, that's you guys, and help somebody out. So that's something positive that's going on in my life. So today we're going to be talking about the topic of reasonable doubt. And what does it mean to have reasonable doubt? Well, the term reasonable doubt comes from the American court system wherein if you're put on trial, and sometimes it feels like anxiety, OCD, depression are putting you on trial. I've noticed a lot, and a lot of the times the thoughts or the intrusive thoughts that I have, it feels like I'm on trial for something. But in the American justice system, when you are put on trial for something, the goal is to provide proof beyond a reasonable doubt that something occurred. So there's that operative word again, reasonable doubt. And reasonable doubt is really a two-way sword or two-way swing of the sword. On the one hand, reasonable doubt exists because you're unsure of something, though there's substantial evidence to sway one way or the other. We can't be sure, but there's a good amount of evidence that proves that it's probably one way or the other. And, but there's still this little itty bitty sliver of uncertainty and because there's that, anxiety gets a stranglehold on it and starts shaking you and saying, see, there's this little itty bitty 0.11111% chance that this thing happened and you should come to answer for it. You should be anxious about this. You should try and figure it out, yada, yada, yada. It kickstarts rumination and anxiety. You blow it out of proportion. All this stuff starts to happen. Meanwhile, there's this huge body of evidence over here that says that chances are things are gonna be all right or that chances are nothing bad happened. And, it's very, very hard to see that pile of evidence when anxiety is over here shaking you to the bones, but it's still there. And reasonable doubt is the vehicle by which you can choose what to look at. So getting treatment for anxiety, getting treatment for OCD, getting treatment for depression is very much about taking anxiety's hands back and saying, no, I'm gonna go over here and look at things objectively or look at this body of evidence that states that I'm in good shape. But it's very, very hard to break that stranglehold at least first, but I think a good place to start with is look at your anxiety and look at the things that make you anxious or look at the things that make you depressed. Look at the feelings, the thoughts, the emotions that make you feel kind of down in the dumps or hurt you, I guess in other ways. And then look for the reasonable doubt. Where does the doubt lie? Does the doubt lie in something that I did or something that may happen to me or something that I may do? or does the doubt lie in some external thing that is out of my control? Because chances are, if you have doubts about something outside of your control, then those are contingencies to plan for. Like if you're worried about a hurricane or something coming your way, then that's justifiable uh, doubt or that's justifiable fear. Because if you don't leave, then you're gonna get hurt or you're gonna have a hard time coping with that hurricane or whatever is coming your way. So that's natural. That's natural, healthy cognition. There is a danger present. I have doubts about it. Therefore, I must explore that line of reasoning further. But with anxiety and depression and those sort of things, chances are most of the doubt comes in things that we do or things that we have done or things that we will eventually do. And those are the kind of reasonable doubts that you have to look out for. And those are the ones that cause you the most anxiety. So if you ever have a doubt about something like, oh, I'm gonna bomb this test, or oh, I'm gonna bomb this speech, or oh, I'm going to do something horrible, sit with that for a second. So look for the reasonable doubt there. Why is it that you feel like you're gonna fail this test? Why is it that you feel like you're gonna fail this public speaking engagement? Why is it that you feel that you're going to harm somebody? And once you look at that situation objectively, 99% of the time, you can usually find that, hey, I don't, I don't know why I feel this way. I just have a feeling that I'm not gonna do well on this test. Maybe I didn't study enough or maybe something like that um, didn't happen or maybe with public speaking, I had one time where I gave a public speech and I kind of stuttered and I was really worried about uh, what people would think of me and now I'm kind of afraid of speaking or when you're thinking about harming somebody, it's like, oh, I came really close to hurting somebody. It would have been really catastrophic if that happened, but it didn't. But 
in each one of those situations, there's kind of an inkling of, or a shred of maybe lack of self-confidence, or maybe um, you just don't feel like you'll act in a certain way, or you'll act habitually, because again, anxiety has a way of getting hold of you and making you think that all the habits that you have, so if you're a good person, suddenly you're going to not become a good person. You're going to snap your fingers and you're going to be evil. Or if you're taking a test and historically you've always really done well on these tests and that sort of thing, suddenly you're just going to do horribly. Or, hey, if you're a public speaker, you've spoken to people in public before, but snap of the finger, something bad's going to happen, then that's where anxiety gets a hold of you. But the recovery or the road to recovery comes in realizing that those situations are not usually founded in rational logic. The fact is that you do really well on tests sometimes, and the fact is that you do speak to people from time to time in public settings, and the fact is you've never harmed somebody in your life, so chances are good that you won't ever do it ever again, or you won't ever harm somebody. So that's where reasonable doubt becomes your friend. So I guess to wrap up today's video and to kind of put a bow on the idea of reasonable doubt, doubt and reasonable doubt are the vehicle by which anxiety gets a hold of you, but you can just as easily push the anxiety's hands away and say, no, I don't want to go that way, I want to go this way, and look at the body of evidence that says, hey, I'm a good person and I'm going to do just fine, and when all is said and done, I'll probably do a lot better than I think I'm going to do. So that's what mental health recovery is all about, getting to that side, taking control of the vehicle and going over here towards the bright future that we all know is coming you just have a little bit of trouble seeing it right now because your brain's a little bit foggy. So look for the reasonable doubt in everything that you do and make it your friend. And to wrap things up today and wrap up this video, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to end in the traditional way. And that is by me saying, always remember that you are wanted, you are loved, and you are appreciated. You have a special talent that nobody else has, and the world is waiting on you to bring it out. So muster a little courage, go out into the world, and change it. That's what the world's waiting on. You. Hey there, ladies and gents, thank you so much for watching the video. I appreciate you giving me a little bit of time out of your day. If you liked the video, leave a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, leave a thumbs down. I learn just as much from the dislikes as I do from the likes. And if you want to continue the conversation, leave a comment down below. You can talk about just about anything from cat videos on to computer science questions or whatever is weighing on your mind. And if you want to follow me on social media, I've got links to my various social medias. I would love it if we could connect on those platforms and you can keep track of me and what I've been up to outside of the YouTube realm and possibly get a sneak peek into projects that I'm working on before they air here on YouTube. Thank you so much, guys, for watching the video again, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Take it easy.